All right, well, I'm a bit late to this party. Um, so this is my very first uh, movie review like this, I mean. Um, I used to do this with uh, Danny Treefrog, but after two of those, I decided to just do something like this eventually. <laughs> um, so this is my very first review like this. Uh, it's not really going to be a visually pleasing type of deal. I mean, unless you find the poster pleasing or the background pleasing somehow. Um, and I currently don't have an intro. So, um, you know, you can always comment if you want an intro really bad or if you don't want one or you wouldn't really care either way. Uh, but for the meantime, in the meantime, I don't have an intro. And yes, this will be all unscripted, as most of my reviews go for other review shows. So getting into this... Um, and there probably will be pauses at some point where I'll stop it and make another recording and, and well, you know, I, you probably don't care about that. Anyway, getting to the movie part. So, I actually saw this, um, Sonic the Hedgehog in, uh, like the day after it came out. I'm just, I'm just now getting to the review though over a week later, uh, as, at, at the time of this th uh, video's recording. Um, so... What did I think of the movie overall? Well, the short answer is I really loved it. Of course, it's not the best movie ever, but uh, I will agree that it is the best video game movie or you know movie based on a video game franchise out there, which is not that hard to do, I will admit. Although I do think that uh, calling movies really vi movies based on video games really bad, I, I think. There's, there are times when it's overly exaggerated, and um, I don't know. I, I think that like not all of them are terrible or as terrible as people say, but I do agree with. But I do agree that like when it comes to the general audience, they're, they're probably not going to appreciate it as much as the fans. And and if you get something wrong with the fans, you know you'll hear it. So, um, but yeah, uh, what did I think? Yeah, this movie. I already told you what I thought of it. I really loved it as a Sonic fan, and as a as a moviegoer, it was still pretty good. Um, like, uh, I don't know what exactly to say that hasn't already been said, but um, I know that there's like this movie has gotten kind of mixed feelings overall, like uh, in terms of fans and just com moviegoers, common moviegoers, whatever. Um, but I'm one that really loved it. And yes, it really surprised me to see that the movie did as well as it did. Like, I, I think I made a picture a while back that said like, uh, or, or well, I pretty much talked about it too. It's not just a picture form, but I, I pretty much predicted that this movie would do, uh, that it would probably do poorly even if it was good because just because of the fact that it's a vi movie based on a video game franchise and it's Sonic of all things so I, f I predicted that it would do bad anyway but I would have to judge it on my own which I still do with a lot of Sonic well, a lot of things but mostly Sonic because I, I can hardly trust the internet anymore with Sonic or you know um, anyway getting to the actual review part uh, yeah it was it was really good um, surprisingly uh, the beginning of the movie, like, basically the plot is, um, if you don't actually know, uh, Sonic, and I, I probably will put spoilers in this, uh, I know a lot of p other people don't, but I will just say there will be spoilers, so, and I don't know if I'll, I will be, I may be too lazy to put where to, you know, avoid the spoilers in this video, so I would just say, if you really don't want to know the plot, don't watch the video, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so, the movie begins with Sonic, um, kind of, uh, well, at the beginning, at the very beginning, it shows kind of near the climax of the movie, or sort of the, not really, but like the getting there, getting to the climax, but, and, but it's one of those things where it says, okay, uh, who am I, who is this guy chasing me, well, let's, let's go back, uh, so many, you know, years, or so many, you know. To basically to the beginning of the movie, the actual beginning. Um, it shows Sonic as a, well, baby. Well, not really baby. He's more like a young, really young kid. Um, I don't think I'd call him baby, because if, if he was a baby, he'd, he'd be like, Goo Goo Gaga wouldn't be able to talk. 
and, and he does talk uh, to his uh, what do you call uh, you would call her I guess a parent of some sort or a guardian whatever and um, one thing that I have that, like someone pointed out I can't remember who but like it, it seems like uh, she was there before the read like she was they pr it's okay it seems like they kept the same design for this owl character named Longclaw um, Seems like they kept the same design as what they were going for before with the design that everyone hated. Um, with, uh, you know, art style and stuff. Um, of Sonic. So, anyway. She, uh, she's a guardian and um, the movie is, uh, and like it shows Sonic um, bringing her, like running around and stuff and bringing her a flower and, um, but he doesn't realize he's being tracked. First of all, this move, the the beginning of this movie, the explaining who the characters are, is that actually goes by really quickly, because I imagine they just wanted to get to the movie itself. They didn't want to spend a whole lot of time explaining everything. Um, which, in a way, I appreciate. In another way, I think it could have been slowed down a little bit. But again, it's a it's a PG rated movie. It's supposed to be a family movie, so kids will be watching, and they don't want to hear all day about, you know, they want to watch Sonic go fast. So. Um, anyway, uh, Sonic brings Longclaw a flower, and that's, like, why he was running around in Green Hill. Uh, well, I imagine it's called Green Hill on there, and, uh, I'll get to other stuff later on. Um, and, uh, but after that, he's, it shows that he's been tracked down by the, uh, the Echidna tribe, which they didn't actually say the Echidna tribe, but... Uh, you, if you're a Sonic fan, you know that's what that is, which is amazing to see. Uh, and you know, okay, I'll get to. I had some on my mind, on my mind, but I'll get to that in a bit, hopefully. Um, but after that, Long Claw's like, "Oh shoot, uh, he's she saved Sonic," and she's like, "Okay, Sonic, uh, you're not safe here because of your powers." Um, and so that so she said like you know use these rings to get get yourself to a safer place um, which that's where the teleporting rings come in is uh, which yes uh, if you didn't know they were in the original Sonic and some of the other Sonic games so it's not like something the movie came up with but the movie did come up with like if you think of where to go and then you throw the ring that's where that's where you go so that's that's pretty much what um, the rings do is teleport to other locations. Um, anyway, Longclaw's staying there. You don't really know what happened to her uh, because the ring the Sonic goes through disappears before he can go back and get her, or before she can go through. Um, sad, blah blah blah. Uh, <laughs> but it's so quickly it, you don't really feel that much of an emotional impact. Um, but anyway, uh, then it shows like 10 years later, uh, Sonic's enjoying himself uh, amongst the humans and stuff, and he's, he's been trying to hide, he's been trying to hide, but, um, you know, some people suspect things, or this one guy named Crazy Carl, uh, he's, it's really funny because that's how they, basically that's how they uh, show off the joke about, um, that's how they work in the Sanic picture into the movie. Which is funny. I mean, you know, that's pretty funny. But I don't know. I've n I've never really been that big of a fan of Sanic. It's it's funny, but I think it's been a little overused. But I think they worked it well into the movie. Um, anyway, so he's he's kind of hiding out amongst the humans, and um, or you know, like amongst them without them knowing. He lives in, he lives in a cave and he has various things with him, um, just to. You know, keep himself from being lonely. But well, well, okay, that's the thing is he's apparently pretty lonely in the movie, and uh, believe it or not, Sonic has emotion in this movie. Uh, something that Sega seems to not know how to do anymore, or Sonic Team, or uh, whoever decides that Sonic should just always be optimistic and happy and never ever uh, sad or broke or whatever, broken down. Um, and again, I'll get to that here in a bit, comparing the movie and the games and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, Sonic 
um, you know, he's he's very lonely and stuff, and obviously he's afraid of, of like, what the humans would... I, I guess he's afraid of what the humans would do if they find out about him. Maybe they're... It's probably the cautious thing about, you know, his powers and stuff. Uh, anyway. But eventually, um, after a while, he, uh... He, you know, after watching the human stuff, there's a point where he would um, go to a baseball game, like a, or softball, whatever it is, uh, not like, like for kid, like kids' baseball game, um, not like major league. So he goes there and he's like, uh, you know, this is oh, this is fun. Wow, he's he's impressed. He he watches movies with um, the uh, Tom the Cop. Which is the you know the guy who he you know that's what makes it the buddy comedy movie whatever, um, who he goes with throughout the movie who you, the guy you see in the trailers and stuff, um, and uh, he he watches movie well I mean from the window he watches movies with uh, him and his wife and uh, her dog and stuff, um, and. Uh, so he just does this very. He just gets these various things through. Uh, I guess when no one notices, uh, like Crazy Carl. That's like I said, is, is a character you don't see that much through the movie, but you do see him at the beginning and near the end. Um, and like that's again where the Sonic picture comes in because he's talking about the Blue Devil, and that's, he's obviously referring to Sonic. Um, and there's this really funny thing that uh, Sonic calls. Uh, Tom and his wife, like he calls Tom uh, the Donut Lord, and there is a reason for that. Uh, but um, I, I guess I'll just leave. I, I guess I'll just let you watch the movie and see the reason. Um, and then he calls his wife the Pretzel Lady, and um, that's because it had something completely different in mind. And I was thinking, oh, they got away with that, huh? And then. It shows the real reason is because she uh, uh, does yoga and stuff, and the way she looks, she kind of shapes herself into a pretzel, and it's like, oh, I had something else on my, in mind, and, you know, let's just not get into that. Anyway, um, so, after a while, uh, he when he goes to this baseball game, when everyone leaves, he kind of plays by himself, and again, that's where you see in the trailer, kind of plays by himself, does... You know, game and stuff, and when he just he's like, "Yay!" and then he realizes he's alone, and he gets emotional, and that's sort of where his powers kind of like teen angst stuff, <laughs> almost like he, he is supposed to be a. T I imagine he's supposed to be a teen in the movie, because I'm I, I gotta imagine he was at least like three or four years old, or five, whatever, somewhere between three and five at the beginning of the movie, and then it says ten years later when he's on Earth and stuff. Um, so I imagine he's he's a teenager. A young teenager, but a teenager. Um, so then he uh, uh, he kind of gets emotional. His uh, powers start going, and he starts running around the field like really, really fast. I guess to get his emotion out and stuff. And then that that's what causes. That's pretty much what starts the movie. Is that he runs so fast he causes a power outage throughout the world, or at least throughout the U.S. or part of the US I can't remember exactly how much he affected but um yeah the power went out and um so that that's kind of what starts the movie and then like the government's like oh we got to figure out what this is and Jim, and then like they get uh I was supposed to say they get Jim Carrey they get Do Dr. Robotnik who's played by Jim Carrey obviously I I'm sure you didn't know that um <laughs> I'm sure you didn't hear it throughout everything uh every bit of talking about this movie um so yeah they they call dr robotnik they're a little hesitant but they call him they say he's a little weird and stuff um but he may be the only one who can uh figure it out and then uh i will say i will agree with a lot of people jim carrey is eggman or robotnik at robot yeah you know who uh is is really good and he's and he's able to pull off a Jim Carrey character, but it still feels like Robotnik. Like it still feels like you know if you see this Eggman in the games, you would you know it still feels like Eggman. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, 
they call him and his character he's basically the uh, guy who he looks down on everyone like he's this weird guy that just look, he's he's really intelligent and stuff but he just looks down on everyone and sees them as beneath him and um, you know he sees his robots as just the more superior beings uh, than humans and he, he, he acknowledges it um, and uh, and of course it, they did have at one point where it has like uh, Eggman was a, a Robotnik I, I gotta keep saying Robotnik was uh, bullied in, in school and then after a bully hit him he uh, well he explains it in the movie I won't go into every detail um, he gets called he uh, says to look for Sonic and then like in the meantime, uh, which I think some of these scenes were before all this happened, before uh, Robotnik's entrance, um, it had like a, a... What am I trying to say here? <laughs> I'm trying to get my mind straight. Um, Tom the Cop, which I'm just saying Tom the Cop because I mean we just acknowledge. Uh, Tom, I forgot his last name actually. Okay, I'm just going to say Tom. Uh, his, Tom and his wife, you know, they're celebrating because Tom got a uh, promotion to being a cop in uh, San Francisco, or, or promotion, well, whatever it was, he was he was going to transfer to San Francisco. Uh, he lives in Montana, which is Green Hills, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Green Hills, Montana. He's he's going to transfer to San Francisco to be a cop there. Um, and it's there's actually a really funny joke where uh, uh, his wife pulls out a cake and it's supposed to be in cell I guess she's preparing in celebration and um, she pulls out the wrong she had two cakes and she pulls out the wrong one at first and it says San Francisco sucks it was really funny the way it was because you know obviously she was just preparing if he didn't get the job <laughs> uh, it, it was it was it was funny. Um, which there are a lot of funny moments in the movie. You know, I probably should speed this up because I'm about to give every de just about every detail of the movie. It's probably going to take as long as, as the movie is for me to explain everything. So I'll speed it up. Once well, Sonic causes the electricity to go out and Robotnik does his thing. And uh, uh, Sonic has to leave. He tries to uh, take everything with him. Um, but then he but then he realizes that like there's uh, people around him or the government's around him and they oh no I can't do it here so that's when he goes into Tom's garage and Tom thinks it's a raccoon he he so he gets a um, a gun a uh, tranquilizer gun that belongs to his wife because she's a veterinarian um, and even though it's for bears he's gonna try to shoot a raccoon with it and obviously he ends up shooting Sonic. Sonic loses his rings because he accidentally says San Francisco um, because he saw Tom's shirt and he drops the rings through the ring at, on top of a building in San Francisco and then the ring, the magic ring disappears so he has to go get them and uh, you know that's when it kind of starts uh, obviously they're, they're both scared or, or Tom is scared at first he's like he doesn't know what's, what to do what's going on with this alien thing um and then they, you know, then they go off on their adventure to, or, you know, road trip to, uh, go to San Francisco, uh, after, uh, well, after that, after, uh, Tom has to deal with Robotnik coming to his house looking for Sonic, and, uh, so now Robotnik's after Tom as well, and Tom is considered a, uh, terrorist of some kind? I can't remember exactly how they referred to him as, but basically they go on their road trip, um, Tom... And, yeah, Tom and Sonic. Thomas Sonic, I don't know. <laughs> um, and they do various things. There's a there's a bar fight at one point. It's re That's actually really funny. And But before they get into the uh, bar scene, there's a funny moment, funny little joke about a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, telephone booth. And uh, <laughs> they're so they're really uncommon these days, so that's why it's like it's basically for the kids not really knowing what they are. Um, I don't even know if there's one in my area, and I live in I live in a place where there's a lot of old timey things, so there there could be, but I haven't seen one in a while. Um, but it's kind of funny because they were the Tom's like it's a telephone booth. Uh, it's usually it's mostly used by drug dealers and uh, high end criminals or something like that. I, I can't. 
Don't quote me on that, but like, it's something like that. But he says something about drug dealers and other criminals. Um, so, uh, so there's that, and then they, they go into his, uh, Sonic goes in this bar, and Tom has to go in there with him. They think Sonic's a kid at first, but they have to, he has to kind of explain to him that he's just this weird, deformed, adult, midget person. <laughs> I can't remember what they said. Uh, and then they go in there. There's eventually a bar fight. It's really funny. Sonic does a thing where he's going so fast that he uh, uh, causes everything to slow down. And, the, and and everyone refers to that Marvel character. And I can't, Quicksilver, I think. I don't really know that much about the X-Men. So I, I can't really say for sure. But like, um, that's what they're referring to. Um, which I think I may have had may I may have seen a clip or two of like his character of Quicksilver doing the slowdown thing. Um, well, Sonic does that, so he sets everything up in a hilarious way to uh, uh, end the bar fight, uh, and obviously gets Tom out of the way so he doesn't get affected. Um, and then th as that's going on, he, he that's when he first has a chili dog. Uh, and, and, and then burps, and it's just like, ah, ha, ha, uh, for the kids. And then, um, after the bar fight, after they escape, they stay in a motel, and eventually Sonic does all this stuff, and, and randomly, this is a very, it's not a Nickelodeon movie, but it's Paramount, and they do a lot of Nickelodeon movies. This is a very Nickelodeon thing, they just, they just have him fart. Obviously, that was just for the kids. They just took up the opportunity that Sonic eats chili dogs to, uh, Give him a, give a fart joke, which really there hasn't been that many in Sonic game. Okay, in the Sonic games, the only one I can think of is uh, where um, if you give the Chow it, the Chow Garden, where if you give him, uh, which obviously Sonic fans are gonna know what I'm talking about. Um, if you give the Chow skunks uh, a skunk thing, I'll just say skunk power up be, for those who don't know what I'm talking about. Um, then they'll fart sometimes, but it's because they're skunks. And there was like a couple of fart jokes in Sonic in the Sonic Boom cartoon. Other than that, in this movie, there hasn't been any kind of like crude humor in Sonic, um, other than a burp maybe. But um, anyway, back on track. Uh, so um, eventually, so after the hotel scene, they eventually uh, or motel, whatever it was. Uh, they eventually go back on the road trip. Tom explains that he's going to San Francisco and moving away from uh, Green Hills. And Sonic's kind of upset about that because he's like, that's actually a really nice place. Of course, that's probably a nod to saying, uh, well, Green Hill's the best place. So think of the ga the first game, the Genesis games. Oh, they were the best. I don't, I don't personally agree they were the best. They were good, but you know. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, Sonic uh, and is upset about that. And then... And then they deal, have to deal with Robotnik at one point, deal with the machine that you even saw in the first trailer uh, with the first design and stuff. Obviously, it looks a lot better here. And then Sonic flosses after he defeats the thing because it's, uh, you know, uh, they had, of course they had to. I mean, that, but, uh, okay, let me, let me go off track here a little bit. Flossing, yes, it looks really dumb. I would never try to do, I mean, I have tried it just out of curiosity but not in front of people, because that's a really dumb thing. Um, but it, but at the same time, I don't think it's that big of a deal to have that. I mean, like, yeah, it's dumb, and it's, it's, it's a current trendy thing, so of course it's going to age poorly in the future, but I don't think it's like a terrible, oh, it just ruins this moment type of thing. Um... And yes, he does it twice. He does it near the end of the movie, or like pretty much in one of the last scenes. Um, well, anyway, after that, they go back on their road trip. Um, they have to get rid of this little uh, thing, and um, and like that, it causes the truck's top part to come off, and um, and then like uh, another one comes, and eventually they get it off of them, and but it causes an explosion and knocks Sonic out. Um, so they eventually get to this house that uh, uh, his uh, wife is, I, I keep forgetting her name, um, his wife's uh, staying at with her sister and uh, and then you know her sister's daughter and that's also where the dog is. Um, 
well, apparently, uh, his sis her sister is very. You should get you should get a divorce from this man type of person. Uh, she, she's funny, but like uh, you know, she's one of those people. Um, and uh, at, at first, I thought that the daughter of her sister was going to be the daughter of her and you know Tom. Uh, and then like she was going to be more throughout the movie. I will say I'm glad that they decided not to have a kid be with Sonic. You know, going through an adventure and stuff, because I have a feeling that it would focus more on the kid. That's another thing. Let me let me also go off track of the plot of the movie real quick. It's it's part of the review, I promise. <laughs> One thing I'm glad of is uh, glad about is they didn't just focus on the humans. Like, you know, you, you got a lot of these animated movies. One example, one earliest example for me that I can think of is the Thomas the Tank Engine movie. Thomas and the Magic Railroad, I think it's called. Uh, from 2000? Yeah, 2000, I think. Um, I remember seeing it as a kid, and, you know, it was just cool to see the trains and stuff. But they focused so much on the humans rather than the trains. I mean, yeah, they had the trains there, but it felt like they were more side characters. I mean, yeah, there were scenes that focused on them, but like, it felt like they were more side characters rather than being... Like, it, it feels like more like this would be like the Shining Time Station movie rather than the Thomas movie. Because they focus more on the humans. And not even Shining Time Station humans. They just have, uh... Anyway, movies like that, they kind of got on my nerves where it's supposed to focus on this character. But instead they go for the human characters. Uh, because they went with live action and stuff. Um... But I'm really... What I'm really glad about the Sonic movie is that they didn't focus on that. They focused more on Sonic. The the cute the human characters were there a lot, uh, including Eggman, but of course it's he's Robotnik, so that's fine. But I mean like they they focus more on Sonic. And I'm really glad uh, that they didn't just call it Sonic and then focus more on Tom make it Tom and Robotnik the movie. Um, so anyway, uh, but I'm also glad that they didn't have a kid with Sonic because I feel like that would have gotten a little annoying after what, depending on what kid. Uh, but the kid that they did have, like the the niece, uh, I guess you could say of, of Tom and his wife, uh, she was adorable, uh, and uh, she basically gave Sonic his iconic shoe. Well, you know, iconic in terms of colors, uh, his shoes. Um, some new shoes because the shoes Sonic was Sonic was wearing were kind of like worn out, and the socks he was wearing were worn out. Um, so they were kind of taking taking care of him. Uh, and obviously, since uh, Tom's wife is a veterinarian, she uh, um, that's what you call a veterinarian, right? A vet person. Anyway, <laughs> uh, she wakes him up. She kind of takes care of him and stuff. They watch him for a bit. Uh, the the sister is uh, want, wanting to call and say, hey, the alien's here, so they tie her up, which is really funny the way they do it. Um, so then, um, I mean, you don't see it happening, I'm just saying the way it looks is funny. Um, you just see after they've tied her up. Um, so then they go on to San Francisco and try to get Sonic's rings back. Uh, and of course, when they got it back, they were it was supposed to be this false... Uh, Oh, this is the end of the movie. This is a goodbye. Um, but then uh, Robotnik shows up. And this is actually where Sonic calls him Eggman because of his uh, mechs. Some people didn't get it at first, but it's because his mechs look like uh, uh, eggs, so that he just calls him Eggman. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Robotnik is what, he was call is what uh, Eggman was called in the 90s uh, until Sonic Adventure when they transferred over to calling, e calling him Eggman. Uh, well, um, in 1999, uh, 98-99, whatever. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but with um, in Japan, they always called him Eggman, so uh, that's why they transferred over to calling him, I don't know. Anyway, um, but in this movie, I guess because it's made by Americans, they decided to go with Robotnik. To, I mean, his real last name is Robotnik in the games and stuff, too. Ivo Robotnik. Um, but um, they call him Eggman, and then eventually Eggman calls himself Eggman. So, I don't know. Um, anyway, um, they have to deal with him, and uh, Sonic makes uh, 
Tom and his wife go through a ring, go back to Green Hills, Montana, so that way um, they're safe safe from Eggman. And then uh, Sonic, uh, you know, defeats him for the moment. He does another one of those slow down mo- or you know, slows everything else down because he's going so fast. Moments. Um, so then um, all this stuff happens. So Sonic keeps using a bunch of rings to go to different places as uh, Robotnik is chasing him because uh, something else I forgot to mention that Robotnik has a little one of uh, Sonic's quills um, which has a lot of Sonic's power in it Not obviously not all of it but like it has some of Sonic's power and it's enough to uh, kind of make uh, Robotnik's machines a lot you know a lot better um, but anyway um, so yes yeah, so Eggman uh, whatever Eggman is chasing uh, Sonic through all these places, going through his rings and stuff. And then they eventually get to the town of, uh, you know, the little town in Green Hills, Montana. And uh, Eggman's still have still fighting him. Sonic's kind of knocked out at one point again, and if, and they think he's dead this time, which kind of got which kind of got me. I was like, you know, he he's kind of been through this before, but it didn't. But he, again, wasn't dead, so why do they think he's dead this time? Um, that kind of thing. So they think he's dead, and then Robotnik says something, and then Tom eventually is like, you know, he's more human than... He he knows more about being human than you'll ever know, or whatever. Uh, talking to Eggman, and then, like, uh, after he says he's my friend, then Sonic wakes up, and his powers go, like, over... overcharge. And, um... (coughs) This fight was really cool. This is near the end of the movie, by the way. Uh, this fight was really cool, so obviously the finale is gonna look really awesome. So he like hits Eggman in, in a lot of ways, and you know it, it kind of feels like the games where you have to hit Eggman's uh, like the boss battles, where you have to hit him uh, with uh, you know obviously jumping on him and stuff. He does, you know he rolls up into a ball, um, and then um, you know he defeats him that way. He like does this one final blow uh, as he has a ring. Um, ready for him to go to this uh, mushroom planet that they mentioned throughout the movie. Um, he makes Eggman go through there instead. Like, originally Sonic was going to go there to keep safe from the government on Earth, but, you know, he uh, he didn't really want to, but he knew he would have to if he, you know. Um, but he ends up bumping Eggman into it, um, and it's it, honestly, it looks really awesome the way... Uh, Eggman's machine blows up and it knocks him through to the mushroom planet which uh, again this is another reference um, in w- in one of the Sonic games one of the earliest Sonic games uh, there's a place called Mushroom Hill and that's pretty much what it's referring to um, and as a Sonic fan I could see a potential in the sequel ideas but I won't get into that right now <laughs> um, so yeah he bumps him into there um, and uh, you know, bumps him through the ring, and that's that's the end of Eggman there on Earth, at least. Uh, at least they think that it is. So uh, they defeat him. Everything's going all happy. Uh, it does show a scene where Eggman is. It's like I guess a little while later, and it shows like he's he looks more like his Eggman self um, in the games. Cause that that was kind of a cool idea I, I thought of. Like I I heard it spoiled to me long before this is what people were theorizing uh that he would eventually just become so crazy he'd get like his Eggman self in the games he just didn't look like it much in the uh uh movie at first but I thought it was cool if they had him eventually just go crazy and stuff throughout the time of the movie um well anyway that happens and then the government comes over to Tom's house like Tom decides to stay in Green Hills and then the guy's like Hey, uh, thanks for you know doing this, and we're you know he's pretty much saying Eggman, uh, Doctor Robotnik never existed. Basically, just trying to say you know let's let's forget all that. Um, and Sonic stays with uh, Tom and his wife, and then um, they get they even give him his little his own little man cave um, at the in the attic. Uh, set it up for him again. Sonic does the floss once again. Uh, pans out, everything's happy. I can't remember if that scene came first or the Eggman scene. I'm pretty sure that scene came before showing Eggman on, on the Mushroom Planet, Mushroom Hills. Then it goes to the credits. Uh, yeah, that's the movie. And then there's a mid credit scene. Again, this is the biggest spoiler 
I mean, I already spoiled it enough, but like, this is the biggest spoiler for people who don't know. Uh, during a mid credit scene, Eggman or uh, another ring pops up, and Tails the fox comes through. Uh, yeah, Miles Tails per hour. In case, well, I'll just give more information about him. Yeah, Tails, which is uh, another uh, another big fan favorite, uh, which he was introduced in the second Sonic the Hedgehog game, which is considered uh, a lot of people's favorite Sonic game. I don't really, it's not really my favorite, but you know, it's it's a decent one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he comes through and it basically sets up a sequel. And then after that, it's just the rest of the credits. There's nothing after the credits, so you don't have to worry about sitting through that. So basically. Yeah, uh, my thoughts are it was a really good movie. I It was well-paced, and yeah, it had some generic PG kids movie tropes. You know, again, the fart, the some of the crude humors. They, they've mentioned farts sometimes. Uh, not, not, through, not like throughout the movie, like they just mentioned it a lot. It's it, This isn't a... Uh, well, anyway. Um, so there's that, and then you ha again you have the trendy dance things that are you know currently trendy, as of uh, like well more like as of like 2018, 2017 and stuff, and they have it in this 2020 movie. Uh, well, people are still doing it at the time of this recording, you know some of those dances, but again they just they ha there's a lot of uh, product placement in terms of mentioning mostly in terms of mentioning like saying the name stuff Amazon. Uh, uh, they don't say the name of Uber, but they reference Uber as saying like five stars or something like that because Sonic drives at one point. Um, and just all this stuff. Uh, again, it's not going to age the movie too well, but I, I, it didn't It didn't bring the movie down a lot. Like It, it didn't hinder my enjoyment of the movie. Um, I know there's a lot of people that say they, they don't really like when they have a famous character come to the real world, you know, our world and all that stuff, like they're separate and stuff. Um, and I understand that, but this movie does a pretty good job of that. Like, I feel like it could have been a whole lot worse. Like, it, um, like as a lot of people pre were predicting, even I was predicting that the movie wasn't going to be amazing or really great, um, which I did think it was really great. Uh, Mostly as a Sonic fan, but as a movie goer, I still thought it was, you know, like I said, it was, it was still really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, I, I this was a really good movie overall. Uh, I know not everyone's going to like it, but um, I, I'm surprised that, like, as many people did like it. I mean, again, this is like the highest grossing video game based movie of all time. Even It, it even beat out Detective Pikachu. Like, I remember last year understandably there were so many people because they designed uh pikachu and a lot of the other pokemon so well and they compared they were comparing it to the sonic movie because it was coming out well it was originally supposed to come out the same year but obviously got delayed when they redesigned sonic um but yeah detective pikachu which again that was a really good movie but um and there were things that were kind of better in detective pikachu than in sonic but i do like the sonic movie overall Mostly because I'm more of a Sonic fan than a Pokemon fan, uh, but you know what I'm saying. Like, uh, uh, I I was really shocked. I, I don't think, and of course, a lot of people were shocked of how well the Sonic movie did. And here's the sad thing: as a Sonic fan, it's really sad to see, like I'm really happy the movie did really well, but it's really sad that did did they did a better job at storytelling. Than the Sonic game, the the more recent Sonic games have done. I'm like the writing for the Sonic games have always been questionable. Like that's just how it's been. Uh, I wish they would improve, but I'm just saying that's just how it's been. I'm used to, you know, not the best lines, some really cheesy dialogue and all that stuff, and just. But obviously the gameplay is the most important thing, which usually it's good. But this this past decade, the 2010s have just. I don't know. It's it's been a very mixed bag, and it te and now that they okay, let me put it this way. I I can appreciate if they actually put time into making a Sonic game. So they they used to have one like every year, whether a spinoff or a main series one. It was it was every year there was a Sonic game. So like back in the night, just about back in the nineties and the um two thousands. Uh, before the 2010s, there was a Sonic game like every year. 
Um, and again, there doesn't have to be now. Like I can, I can appreciate if they actually put time and effort into making them now, rather than just releasing one every single year. But here's my problem with it: is that they, is that it, they've been kind of medi, it's been kind of a mediocre time for Sonic games lately, and uh, the direction they've been taking it has just been kind of, I don't know, just not very good in my eyes. Um, because now you have to wait a few years to get an okay Sonic game. Or that's pretty much how it was with like Sonic Forces. You had to wait... Like, the pr the last Sonic game that was released before Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces was, uh, I think, S Sonic Boom Fire and Ice, which was... Uh, okay, that was like the year before. Um, but I completely forgot about it because it was just kind of an eh game. It was okay. Uh, the Sonic, obviously the Sonic Boom video game franchise has just been <laughs> But that was the only things we got in terms of, uh, getting any kind of Sonic game before that, you know, obviously there's mobile ones, but, you know. Um, but, like, in terms of main series Sonic game, the, uh, the only one, the main series Sonic games that came out in the 2010s were Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations, Sonic Lost World and Sonic Forces. I don't know if you count Mania. It does connect with Forces, but I don't know. I don't know the whole situation. But basically, that's just like what four games. And in the 2000s, there were like it felt like there were more. There may not have been, but there it felt like there were more. And obviously the 90s. Um, but I don't know. It's just nowadays we have to wait for to see if a Sonic game will ever do good. And the direction they've been taking it, which is what some people refer to as a budget series, it just hasn't been, you know, I just, I don't like that. I, I and I know a lot of people that don't, but, and it feels like they're just mostly trying to pander to the Genesis fans, the ones that will complain almost no matter what comes out. Even with Sonic Mania, they still had complaints about it. So I feel like they shouldn't try to please them anymore, but it feels like they're doing more of that. And I have a theory as to why. My, in short, my, my theory is that it's cheaper to make a, you know, a game that will pl uh, please them, that tries to please them, rather than trying to make a full 3D modern Sonic game. Um, and just this whole thing, Sonic in 2010 was kind of a mess. Had some good games. I really love uh, Sonic Generations. Sonic Colors was okay. Sonic Lost World, it had potential, it just they didn't do it as well. And then Sonic Forces was a big disappointment. Uh, anyway, back to the movie. Uh, I, I'm comparing it to the movie. They did really well. With the, I mean, obviously it doesn't have gameplay, so they have to make the story good. I'm just saying the, that Sega has the money to make this to hire good writers to make the Sonic games good, like in terms of t storytelling and gameplay. But they just haven't. They've just been making it more of a budget series. Like, like it's almost like they're trying to release them and say, well, if it doesn't do as well, we didn't spend that much money on it, so there you go. Uh, and, again, their, their claims that Sonic Forces was, um, was like, uh, Sonic Forces was, was worked on for four years. The, the game itself was only worked on for about a year. The, the only thing that took a few years was the, uh, the new engine they were working on. Uh, which, it feels like they should just go with an Unreal Engine. They don't need to go with their own engine. They just need to use the Unreal Engine. But again, if you if you don't know much about the Sonic video games, you don't know what I'm talking about. But, um... But I'd say a lot of people who know about the Sonic games are watching this. But just in case you don't, it's... It's this whole mess. I think the Sonic movie has done a lot better with the franchise uh, in terms of if you compare it to the 2010s. I think it's done a whole lot better. I am really glad of that. It's a really good movie and I was hoping it would anyway. I'm just saying it's kind of sad that they did such a better job with the franchise and acknowledging things and making them canon uh, without like I don't know. You'd have to look it up to see what the Sonic franchise is like doing these days. Which it, it can be kind of confusing so I understand if you don't want to look it up. Anyway that review was kind of all over the place, and I didn't think it would take me... Uh, right now it says it's taken me over 40... Over 40 minutes, oh, like 44 minutes, almost 45 minutes. So let me go ahead and end things. Again, this is my first time doing a review like this. 
so obviously I'm not going to be that good at it. Just let me know how I did in the comments. You can go all out, just try to keep it civil. Um, but I'm just saying um, this, you know, it's not my first time reviewing a movie in general, but it's my first time doing something like this where it's completely unscripted and almost no pauses. Well, in terms of me stopping it and making another recording and just putting it alongside. I only did that once through this recording. So anyway, um, yeah, leave a like this video if you do like it, and subscribe if you want to potentially see more of these. I don't know how many of these I'm going to do. I may talk about older movies, uh, not just ones that are more recently released. Um, and obviously if this is old, uh, the Sonic movie uh, is has only been out for a little over a week now. Um, I would say almost a week and a half now as, as I'm recording this, so... If this is an old video, that's how old this is. It hasn't been released. The sequel hasn't been really uh, even. Sequel's only been potentially discussed at this point. So, anyway, thanks for watching this. Thanks for bearing with me. This is more of a listening thing rather than a watching thing because I'm just gonna keep. Uh, it's just gonna be this for now. I don't know if I'm gonna have an intro or an outro at the end or whatever. Uh, so yeah, th uh, thanks for watching. I may have an end screen if, if they're still end screens um, by the time you're watching this. If it's whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Thanks for watching and outro. I don't know. <laughs> Go see the Sonic movie if you can, if you haven't seen it yet.